Update. My boyfriend faked a proposal so I broke up with him. Me, 24 female, have been dating my boyfriend Andrew, 26 male, for 5 years now. We've had a healthy and stable relationship up until today. Andrew has always been a prankster and makes jokes with me all the time. And I do it to him too. But today it took it way too far. In the morning, he woke me up at 7 a.m. and told me to wake up because he wanted to take me to the spa. I was pretty surprised because it wasn't his special day or anything, but I was all in for it. At a spa, he told me that he wanted to go to a fancy restaurant after we were done at a spa and that he was paying. Of course, I agreed, as we hadn't been out together in a long time. We go to the restaurant, we had a beautiful and romantic dinner and just a nice time in general. We were talking about a house we were planning to move into and chit-chatted about other stuff too. Then after around 40 minutes, Andrew stood up and got on his knees and took out a box out of his pocket. My heart stopped beating. I hadn't even predicted this. We have never talked about proposal before, but I also thought it was a great time now. He did a speech about how I was the most beautiful girl in the world and how he wanted to live with me forever and ended with, will you marry me, my princess? Of course I said yes. Seconds later, all that excitement turned into horror. He opened a small box I expected he put the ring in and in it was a note saying, you've been pranked and Andrew started laughing hysterically. He continued with, baby, this was just a prank. I'm not ready at all to marry you yet. He was leaning in to hug me, but I gave him the biggest slap ever with tears streaming down my face. I just told him, we're over, you freaking scumbag. I am now sitting in my bed crying and writing this, and I don't know what to do. He's been texting and calling me, but I haven't responded because I feel so sad, betrayed, and mostly angry. I thought this was going to be one of the best days of my life. What should I do? Now for the top advice before reading the update. Jokes are meant to be funny. That's not funny. That's cruel on a sadistic level. Pure evil. Cut your losses and run. Very cruel. Especially him saying that he's not ready at all to marry you yet. Yikes. What do you mean what should I do? You announced that you have a big news. You and Andrew are finally ready to let everyone know that the relationship was just a prank. You're actually single. Then go date someone else who cares about you. Oh my god, yes. Please announce that after five years, it turns out the relationship was a prank all along. I hate jumping on a Reddit bandwagon sometimes, but how the heck did this guy think what he was doing was a good idea? Actually, pretend to make up with him and then stand him up and tell him it was just a prank and that you're not ready at all to give him another chance. People who enjoy hurting and humiliating their partners are vile. You made the right choice. It's better for people who wonder why you're single than for them to wonder why you're with him. It reminds me of that one Reddit post I saw. Guy wanted his wife in pain, so he made her give birth at home. And he got excited when she was screaming from labor. Like WTF. The story was deleted, but to summarize, the girl went into labor. She had a plan to go to the hospital, but her husband wouldn't let her. He made her lay on their bed. When she tried to go to call her mom to come get her, they took her phone. While she was going through contractions, she begged him to take her to the hospital. He said her begging turned him on, and he refused her. Every time she had a contraction, he got excited. The worse it got, the more happy he was. He kissed her belly, said he liked her in pain or some nonsense, because she was giving birth to his child. Anyways, she gave birth. She said she didn't even register him putting the child on her chest because how in pain and tired she was. He cut a cord. Then he refused to take her to the hospital because he said she already had a baby. When he went to sleep, she packed and called her mom and took her to the hospital. I believe she needed stitches and had an infection. Baby was fine. May this guy rot. I saw that one too. Absolute psycho, keeping her from getting to a hospital and looking all satisfied when seeing her in pain. Now for the update. Thank you guys so much for all of the love and the replies on my last post. I honestly didn't expect it to get as much attention as it did, but I'm very, very grateful for that and it has helped me a lot. After I made that Reddit post, I fell asleep crying, then woke up and decided to call my now ex-boyfriend. I told him that it was over and that I didn't want to be together with someone who, after five years, still isn't ready for marriage and make a big joke about it. He cried and then turned angry and demanded me to stay 
and told me I was a freaking a-hole for leaving him like this. After everything he has done for me. He cussed me out so much that I stopped listening at one point so I don't really remember everything he said. In the end, we came to a sort of agreement that we are going to sell the house and that he will be sleeping in the guest room for now. So today I've just been scrolling the internet for apartments so I can have a fresh start. He is still not happy about the breakup though. He is trying so bad to get back with me saying stuff the whole day. Like, can't we be together again? And this was just a small mistake I made. But the one that did it for me was, don't be so freaking petty and drop it. You know we are happy together and you know you still want me. When he said that, I absolutely lost it and called him every single name I could come up with, then slammed my door. I think he also told his family about this whole situation, because today I got a call from his mom telling me how selfish I was and how I couldn't handle a simple joke, and it ended with her calling me a st and hanging up the call. After that, I've gotten several messages from his other family members such as his siblings, his dad and even his aunt. I've tried to just block them all. But every now and then comes a new message. I feel like more will happen, but the next update will probably not be in less than a week or so. As I'm gonna try to sell stuff I don't need, find a new apartment, and fix everything with the house and stuff before we put it up for sale. I just want to get out of here as quickly as possible. How could his mother call you s***? He disrespected you. His act was so humiliating that she should say sorry that she did not invest enough time to teach him how to behave because admitting her son's fault would indicate her poor parenting. As many parents do, it is easier for them to pretend their kids are perfect, and it is the world that is wrong. I'll also bet that she didn't get the full story. I doubt Opie's ex is a reliable narrator. Demanded me to stay is a red flag of a phrase if I ever heard one. That entire update is screaming red flags. Opie, I'm scared for you. It's all lies, gaslighting, anger. Don't be so effing petty and drop it. OMG, it's all so, so bad. And a family's calling her? WTF? What kind of loser is this guy? I'm gonna tell my dad you broke up with me. OMG, everything is so wrong here. Stay strong, Opie. Either his whole family are a bunch of a-holes just like him, or he didn't tell them the truth, and instead told them she's leaving him for just a little prank, and that has tried to say sorry, but she's not listening or maybe both. His mother calling her is, is so unnerving. He didn't even have the decency to apologize, but I guess a guy that could do that and think it was funny also wouldn't think he did anything wrong. I'm sorry he did this to you, but you're better off without him. That's the kind of guy who would also pretend to cheat and then call it a prank. But he called mommy to get her to yell at Opie. Opie is dodging a few bullets here. Next story. Update. Ex fiance wants to catch up after he left me at the altar. How do I proceed? Original post. My 28 female ex fiance Derek, 32 male, disappeared the morning of our wedding two years ago, evading all attempts to reach him for myself and his family. It was devastating, absolutely soul crushing. The event turned into a party to distract from the pain of the unknown. Afterwards, I returned to our apartment and slept on a bathroom floor in my wedding dress. It was quite the ugly sight, to be honest. His mother ended up coming to the apartment when she informed me tearfully that Derek had run off with an ex of his. They had apparently reconnected a week prior to the wedding, and he just couldn't go through with it, opting instead to rekindle his relationship with his ex. His family was horrified, and I didn't hear from him until three months after he left. He called me, apologized, and then revealed that his ex had been hiding his child from him that he just found out about and he wanted to be with them. That's pretty much all that was said. I didn't say much. Actually, I think I only said hello. The whole situation left me numb. I just didn't care anymore. Thankfully though, my friends were there and continued to be there for me through all of this muck. They encouraged me to seek therapy and work on healing, which I'll be honest was terribly difficult. But after a year, I felt myself again. Which brings me to today. After this whole debacle and subsequent self-improvement and rebuilding, I moved to the UK, originally from Australia, for a change in scenery. Last night I got a message request on Instagram. It was Derek. Hey, I've heard you moved to Wales. That's so cool. I'm traveling to Cardiff towards the end of July. I'm deeply sorry about everything, and I want to discuss what happened leading up to the wedding. I hope I'm not overwhelming you. 
Let me know if you'd like to talk over lunch. Firstly, no idea who told him about my move. Secondly, I don't know if I crave closure from him. But I also don't want to just decline, only to regret my decision later. So I turned to use strangers of the internet. What should I think about before reaching a decision? Would it be wise to decline? Or should I humor him and listen to his reasons? Now for the advice before reading the update. I wouldn't bother. You've closed that chapter. Don't open old wounds for yourself. He's selfish AF. This. He likely wants to talk, to assuage something with his conscience. I wouldn't give him that relief. Let him live with the full consequences of his actions. You're better off just moving forward. This. He deserves nothing. Not your time, not your energy or effort, and certainly not your undivided attention. No, it's a complete sentence. You make your own closure. You will not get closure from this man. Meeting him will set you back in your healing, and you truly don't deserve that. What he did isn't explainable. He betrayed you. He shamed you. And he couldn't even send you a single text to say sorry. He's done. He's over. He's banking on your curiosity about it all, so he can get his shoe in once more. Even his message to you was appalling. Stonewalling and then reappearing as if nothing has happened are abusive traits. Don't do this. Take the moral high ground. Block him on everything and shut him down. No last message, no explanations, no apology. Your job, dear one, is to make this man 100% irrelevant to you. When that day comes, you will know you are healed completely from this. All the very best. Minor update. Wow, this garnered far more attention than I anticipated. So bear with me as I try to navigate all of your advice. Although the general consensus is quite clear. I have learned that an old mutual friend of ours revealed where I moved, and evidently he's been stressing that he needs to tell me something. For the time being, I have decided to simply ignore his message and work through any emerging feelings with my therapist. Thanks. Now for the full update 11 days later. Hello everyone, I did update in my original post, but I've decided to repost it here. So, as I mentioned previously, I decided to not respond to his message. A day after, however, I received another message from him, which I won't write out in its entirety. To sum it up for all you though, he apologized for how disingenuous his initial message was, and explained why he had reached out to me. Essentially, he wanted to discuss that week, that final week before our wedding, and the events that led up to him dipping out. Now, I will refrain from entirely delving into my ex's and I's past, but my ex fiance was diagnosed with PTSD with avoidant attributions from past experiences. His diagnosis did provide quite a bit of clarity, looking back our relationship and his past behavior, so I truly feel for him in his journey of self-healing. However, despite his struggles, I still told him that I couldn't forgive him for his callous act of leaving me in a perpetual state of limbo for three months, and sure of why he had abandoned me. He said he understood. Now, and some of you will be quite mad with me, but I ultimately agreed to meet him for lunch, and I do not regret it. He's not with his ex, actually. She passed away six months after he left me at the altar, which is part of the reason why she reached out to him in the first place. Since then, he has been working on himself through therapy and navigating single fatherhood. Yes, the child is his. The lunch wasn't too long, but it was all around cathartic on both sides. At the end of the lunch, he handed over an envelope which contained all money was spent preparing for the wedding. Honestly, I was dumbfounded. It wasn't a gesture I was expecting on his behalf, and I think he was also taken aback when I returned the ring he gave me. It's funny I held onto the ring, just in case I needed to sell it if my finances continued to be unstable. But I never had to. Ironic that in the end I did receive money whilst seemingly trading that ring. He looks better. And not to toot my horn, but I feel I do as well. Now that chapter has concluded, and I no longer feel rage or remorse, I feel free. I fear that I might have still harbored feelings for him, but I have since found that I loved him for the man he was in that moment when we were together. And though we're now apart, I'm okay with looking back and acknowledging the love I had for him. I've closed that chapter now, with him, with the woman I was with him. Thank you all so much. Any advice on what I should spend the money on? Wow, I'm not a believer in closure. But that is some serious closure, right? Part of my brain went, damn. He apologized, explained what happened. A shitty situation for all involved, quite frankly. 
gave her money to offset the money spent on the wedding. Sounds like a great guy. They should get mayor... Oh, wait. A feel for both OP and the ex. You're right, though, about closure. Rarely in life does everything get so packed up so nicely with a bow. Yeah, it was a really shitty thing to do it with no explanation. But I can sympathize with the weight of getting a call from an ex of, we have a child you didn't know about, and now I have a terminal diagnosis. This is a great case where her ex would garner a lot more sympathy if he had communicated. All he had to do was say, I just found out my ex hid a kid from me for years. We need to hold off on getting married until I sort this out. Boom, relationship hope is kept alive, and you don't completely screw the person you're supposed to marry over. More so if he said, ex hid a kid and is dying of cancer in next six months. Truly hard to imagine what PTSD could do to someone. For me, if I ever were in this position, just coming out truthfully seems to be the easiest option and would potentially lead to a much happier outcome. I remember reading the original post and thinking, the audacity of this guy to reach out like this after what he did. I thought it's reaching out only to rub it in her face more, but I'm glad it kind of ended well for her. Nothing justifies what he did though, but he does seem like a good soul deep down. I read the original too. In her place, I couldn't have resisted that meeting either. It would have kept niggling at me what he would have revealed to me. I don't get why he had to jilt her though. If the ex contacted him to tell him she was terminally ill and needed him to take over parenting their kid, couldn't he have done that together with Opie if she had been willing? They would have had to postpone the wedding of course, while they got acquainted with a child and ex was finishing her illness. But then, if they could have worked out the new family dynamic, they could have hitched the knot later on. His ex was the true a-hole in the story. First, she keeps his child from him. Then she springs the surprise in the worst possible way, triggering his PTSD and torpedoing his life completely. If she had at least waited until after the wedding, she could have given her kid a complete set of 